Well, if he doesn't think it's an embarrassment, he better tell the investors in, in the football club who are just about to empty him. And that's what's going to happen. Barring that he turns around and they wall up Manchester City by four or five, uh, and some amazing feat occurs, the only thing that was... And, and he's right to an extent, there is no shame ever in getting to a cup final. Mm. We've, we've, we've been there. Great achievement. Great, great to be there. What was embarrassing is the way they made it there. And there's no getting away from that. That, that And he's... Listen, Eric Ten Hag can say what he wants. He's been talking garbage. All, I'll give him his due. Last year, he was pretty much on it. He was on the ball, right? But he was having a bit a year last year. He was on the ball. And you think, oh, this guy, you know, he'll come out, he'll call it as it is. This year, from match day one in the Premier League... Till he sat there, was that press conference today? Yeah, it was today. Till he yeah, sat there today, right. till he sat there today, all year, he's talked garbage. Absolute drivel. To be 3 0 up, and, and it's not just, and I was saying to Shaq earlier, it's not just the fact that Coventry came back and there was a deflected goal and then there was a penalty. It's the fact that from half time onwards, basically, and you think about it, the Bruno Fernandes' third goal that we all thought had killed the game actually came about against the run of play. Yeah. But Stuart was at the game, or Stuart was doing the commentary, and he, and he said it right. Coventry played a back five in the first half, which is not their suit. And they tried something different, and it just didn't work, and it was so comfortable for United. But as soon as Matt Robbins changed to a back four, and he didn't change the personnel, he didn't bring any sub... As, it, as soon as he changed to a back four... They were more comfortable, comfortable within themselves and they pretty much dominated from that moment onwards to an extent that Manchester United were hanging on for grim death at the end. And he, listen, this is nothing more than a man who knows he's getting paid up, he's going to lose his job and he's just trying to save some sort of face. But it's not happening. It, it's strange, isn't it? Because we had Harry Maguire on the show after, after the game, Robbo, and he said, look, we played like kids in, in the second mm. half. It wasn't good enough. Why can't Ten Hag accept that it was a really bad day at the office, they got away with one, and we're looking forward now to the final? Why does he have the... Why does he feel it necessary that he has to spin everything all the time into a positive where Saturday clearly wasn't bar the result? The problem is he's a, he's a man who knows he's on the edge. And when managers are on the edge, they talk absolute rubbish. They try and defend themselves. They try and defend their team at times. He'll, he'll state injuries. He'll state everything else to try and make out. You know, he said there, it's brilliant for me as a manager. I've got to four cup farms. He's trying to build himself up again. He would be much better off by saying, yes, we were really poor in the second half. You know, we had no leaders out in the field. I didn't quite get my tactics right. I couldn't change it from the sidelines. I was disappointed with our performance. We were lucky. If you say those sort of things, yes, it's not going to make you make the, the fans enjoy your performance, but they then start to think, well, he understands what went on. You know, he's saying the same things as we are. It wasn't good enough and we'll need to improve because if we don't improve against Man City, we could get beaten four or five. So he's saying all the wrong things at the moment. I mean, everybody can see that. Why the people around him, Steve McLaren, who, who, who likes to think he can uh, talk a good game and, and have, he used to have somebody alongside him, he used to tell him what to say in the, in the press conferences, he should be advising him. No, just be honest for once. It's no good lying and, and trying to whip things up. You've got to tell the truth. And he's not doing that at the moment. Oh, classic Robbo pass passive aggression. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what's, but, what, Steve what, McLaren, take yeah. that. But what's wrong with coming out and saying, listen, I, I, have, I have standards... I have standards, and I had them in Holland, I have them here, and we've dropped below them. We got, as Stuart said, we got the result, but I have told the players that this is unacceptable and we got away with one. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's not difficult, is it? Well, it's honest. Well, like, it's really, really not but difficult. Is he that disillusioned that he really believes? I, I, I think, <laughs> at, at the very least, ever since the turn of the year, and, and probably going back to December to November, somehow every single Eric Ten Hag press conference has been an audition to save his job. And, and, and everything I hear from him just leans, <laughs> leans into that. But how naive further. is that? No, what I, no, I, I listen. Is it going to help? And, and, and the, the, the thing is, as well, it, it's, it's, not just, it's, it's not just this trying to sell everybody a false story. It's, it's the fact that he is also, in my opinion, lowering Manchester United's bar as a result. Because now, all of a sudden, it doesn't really matter whether we win or lose, whether we play well or badly. But we got to more cup finals 
in the last two years than in pre so therefore we far better that lowering of the bar and, and it's reminiscent for, to me of Mourinho and that treble which was the charity shield the Carabao Cup and, and the Europa League or what, whatever it was that's that's where Manchester United's bar that's where they've self-lowered their bar and all of a sudden this now is is, is again um, leaning into that that we aren't we're never going to be who we once were so let's let's Settle for, for this. And, and the thing is, Ten Hag knows, given that he's been to four cup finals in four years by all accounts, that games change perspectives. You, you, let, let's say they go out and, and, and put up a good performance and take City to the wire, if not win it, in the cup final. Nobody's talking about the Coventry game again. In much the same way that after this awful performance against Coventry, nobody's talking about Liverpool. Because that's the nature of the game. So for him to keep showing up and offering the same kind of empty rhetoric, uh, it's just, it, it's frustrating and I think reflects badly, very badly on him when he's trying to audition for his job. I, I, think, he's watching too many, I think he's watching too many political shows in the UK. Where politicians just deny it. No, that never happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got you on tape there. No, no not it's, me. I, mean, I don't think that's just in the UK. No, well, I, bet, I, <laughs> I, 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 well, I thought I'd throw it that way. <laughs> <laughs> just in case it came back to me. But, you know, do you remember he said when, when they really struggled at Brentford recently and uh, they got a draw, but they got absolutely... Yeah, the goal Mason was, Mount scoring late. Yeah, they got peppered. I mean, they got, oh, Nana was peppered this. <laughs> and he came out after and he said... Well, Man City struggled here recently. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> Their goalkeeper made a, made a record amount of saves for a Premier League game in the first half and fell forward and scored the hat-trick. I mean, he's just saying anything at the moment. L last word to you, Rob, on this. Well, he contradicts himself because he said t this time that it's all about results. If you get a result, everything's OK. When he played Manchester City and they were outplayed and, they, and Rashford scored that early goal, he said, we're not far behind Manchester City. It was a, it was a good performance, you know, and, <laughs> and if you looked at the game, we had two or three chances. We could have been 2-0 up. What is he thinking? What is uh, he Rob thinking? Robert,